Hi, and welcome to the Color the World 100 journaling project. I'm super excited this idea came up while I was doing an Instagram Live with people all over the world joining in, um, especially a lot of people that are in lockdown um, or home from their work, uh, essential work for a bit and are needing to de-stress and, and journaling is a great way to do that. Art journaling is, is fabulous. So uh, we talked a lot about color and before I get into doing a color class, um, I wanted to share one fun book on color. Um, I got this at the Color Factory in Houston. No, I didn't. I saw a book on color at the Color Factory in Houston, but I found this book and it is, if you're a color lover, this is just a fabulous book on the history of color, where the names come from, the how the colors are made. Um, it's brilliant, brilliant. And um, I, I wanted to share that. If you can get a hold of a copy of this, it is just fantastic. So uh, that's a little side note. Here is my, my actual work table space, <laughs> but I'm covering it up today to give you just a little, a little uh, break and hopefully a good background for journaling. If you are um, starting a, a journal, a new journal at home, I wanna recommend some. This one is a Ranger, Ranger made journal. It's fabulous, it's bigger pieces. This is, um, you can see from my hand how big this is. Uh, this is a great one. I think this one is relatively new. I've done just a little bit of scribbles and works in it because it's the pages are stuck together. So I've just started warming up this journal. Woo! Um, just started warming up this journal and I'll do some more work in that one. I love doodling on that one. These are my very favorite. These are made by Lake Michigan Book Press. The link is in uh, is on the posts of the journals. If you get a chance to check out this site on Etsy, it is, uh, her journals are just incredible. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be working in for now. I ordered a couple more this morning so that I can continue our little project in them. Um, I also have, I have a little bitty one. Look at this one. You can see how, how big this one is from the size of my hand. I adore this little bitty one. I'll work in that one on our journal project too. But whatever size you're working, it doesn't matter. The size is not important here at all. There it is, Lake, Lake Michigan Book Press. She is just incredible. Um, the size is not important. It's whatever you have. And if you've got notebook paper, use notebook paper. Um, if you can find some sort of craft paper, something that'll hold up to, to a little heavier work, that's fine. If not, don't worry about it. You can use whatever you've got. Um, this is a piece, there's two actually, but I wanted to talk about this one. This one has some fun color combinations. Um, I, this part I'm not so so thrilled with at the point, but I may go back and, and add some, some color, some paint over this and expand that page and work on it some more. This is a practice journal. So this is, we aren't talking about these having to be completed um, presentable pieces. These are, these are journal practice. So this is one I did yesterday, and this is the one that a lot of people had asked the process on this video. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see a little bit closer. Um, super simple, and you can do this too, and that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna walk you through it. I have no idea what it's gonna be. Um, None at all. <laughs> so we're just gonna have some fun and talk about one way to approach a journal page. Um, I'm gonna move the camera in just a little bit closer so you can see. Yep, that works pretty good. And um, you can turn this sideways if you wanna work this way. You can turn it this way, it's whatever you want. This page, ha page has just a little tooth to it. I love a hot press paper that's smooth, but I, I use whatever. You can get different kinds of paper in these journals too, just so you know. Um, tools that I'm gonna be using are uh, Tombow markers. Um, I've got different colored pencils. I've got Derwent ink, ink tints, Faber-Castell, Aquarelle pencils, whatever I can find around here. I've got Crayola colored pencils, uh, Posca pens maybe, 
uh, we'll just see. And I'm gonna use the Caran d'Ache Neo Colors. If you have crayons too, those work awesome. So it's just what, whatever you want to, to use. And you can start um, pencils. Uh, I use the little mechanical pencils, which I have somewhere over here. I have them, believe me, I'm, oh, here we go. I have mechanical pencils that I use sometimes. These are just Bic uh, mechanical pencils. And then my very favorite pencil ever is um, this, um, I have to look, Graph Gear 1000. It's a Pentel uh, number seven, made in Japan. And I've told you so many times, the best art products <laughs> I love come out of Japan. Not all of them, but I just mean, the pens and things are just exquisite. Um, so I'm going to start with that. I'm going to clip down this other page. It's being a little active over here. So I just use a, a little, um, clippy from the office supply and hold that down. And then we're going to get started over here. And I'm going to start with a black Posca pen. So again, start with whatever you have. And I'm just going to start by mark making. I have absolutely nothing in mind here. I am just having fun making some shapes. I love to work with the Posca pins. You guys know if you have seen my work on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook that I am a Posca pin junkie. I love them and I appreciate all of the variety of marks that Posca pins are able to produce on different surfaces. I work mostly on canvas. And so for me, Posca pens are, are fabulous because I can paint and then um, add Posca pen marks to my canvas works right onto the canvas. So I am just, I have no, no objective here. I am just making some fun marks and I'm having fun doing it. So this is, literally this is about having fun. And if you get stuck at this point, close your eyes for a minute, take a few deep breaths, and then pick up your pen and see if that helps you to kind of loosen up and relax. This is a piece of paper. And while I don't want to waste things, of course, I do want you to realize that it is a piece of paper. So have fun on it. Try not to get too intense and too serious about your paper. Um, I want to tell you, I noticed this on my works. I When I make a, a line, I usually go over it at least once or twice and sometimes more times. Um, it, it, this allows, I do this in painting as well. This gives me a lot of directional, um, a direction in applying the color later by having these little areas to fill in. And I think it was Joanne Sharp that I saw this years ago in one of her lettering videos. And I realized I was doing the same thing too, but she really gave direction to that. And, and I appreciate that because I didn't know why I was doing it so much, except that I like the softer shape. Um, we can always draw a straight line, but by doing it three times, we get such a softer shape. We get a, a shape that has so much more character to it. And I always say we can use a ruler if we want straight lines, but to make uh, our own unique quirky lines, uh, we don't need a ruler. So that's what that's what I urge you to make your lines and then go over them again. That's gonna be fun later. As many times as you want, and you don't have to do all of them, just, just some of them. It makes, it makes it very interesting. Okay, so I've got some line work done on here, just free handing and having fun. Now I'm gonna stay with my Posca pen and I'm gonna color in some black areas here just to give me some solid forms. And that's something too that I found from um, Pat Butinsky's Cray Cray 
challenge was coloring in some areas at the beginning. Pat is one of the most amazing teachers I have ever encountered. And if you can check out her work and videos, uh, if, if you don't already know her, she is just incredible. What a crazy, crazy, fabulous lady and artist. Um, so here I go. I'm just coloring. There's so many good artists I, and great artists on Instagram. I just get lost sometimes trying to keep up with everybody. I'm gonna put some little circles up in this corner. Not because I feel like I have to fill every space. I'm, I'm not, I, I, I don't feel like that. I like some, some areas that don't have shapes in them, but my, I kind of follow my eye, follow my eye and see where it, where it calls me. And when my eye calls me somewhere, when it draws my attention, that's when I just respond intuitively to that nudge. And sometimes, sometimes it's good and sometimes, but we can cover it up if we don't like it. Um, you'll notice too, lots of mark making, lots of different styles of marks here. Practice your mark making while you're watching TV, uh, sit with a pencil or a pen on any pad of paper, sticky notes, it doesn't matter, and just mark make. Practice your mark making. It makes you more comfortable and less intimidated when you sit down with a blank piece of paper. If you have practiced and you feel really comfortable with your supplies, with your tools, and uh, it just frees up the flow while you're working. So that's what I'm doing. Highly recommend the mark making. And you notice there's, there's nothing major going on here. We're just having fun. Um, I'm gonna take my pencil now and I'm gonna do a little more coloring in with the pencil. I think I'm gonna color in just a few of these smaller areas. And we may, I may end up putting some Posca marker over them later. We'll see. We will see, but for now. And while you're doing this, you will find, I think, if you'll you'll really um, focus on on what you're doing and enjoy it, that you'll find your mind calms down, and we need some calm in these times. Um, but your mind calms down, you begin to relax and kind of let go and just enjoy this practice. No concern whatsoever about the outcome. This is all about the work, the pro the practice, the practice. So that's what I'm, that's all I'm focusing on right now is the practice. And it feels good because everything else recently has been focused on the news and things going on around the world. And it's really good to take a step back and just relax the mind a little bit. Take some deep breaths. Release the stress. Accept the circumstances for what they are. Do what we can to stay safe. And release that need for control. Because we don't have any. So, okay. That's where I am right now. Loving that. Now, at this point, I'm going to take a drink of my Topo Chico. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, start with some Tombow markers. So if, this is where a lot of people have questions now is, you know, color. Where do I start with the color? This is the big thing right away. Go with the color that you like the most. That's that's your tipping off point. That's your starting point. Um, choose a color that that or that that is catching your eye right this minute, and don't labor over it. Just choose a color and move forward. Okay, there's no formula here. <clears throat> this is really 
about um, just getting getting started, getting going. So I'm gonna going to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna start here now. Okay, I think we lost video for a second, so I'm back. Um, but this is uh, this isn't about having perfect uh, coloring in perfect and in, in the lines and and uh, agonizing over. Um, <coughs> excuse me, staying in the in the lines. Just color, just color, and have fun. Have fun coloring. See, I've got little edges of white sticking out there. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. But I'm going to pick another area here. And you'll notice at this point, I'm allowing the lines that I created here to determine where my color is stopping and starting. It's just giving me some places to break so that I don't have a lot of big bodies of the same color. Um, not that that's bad, but it's not what I want right at this point. Um, and I'm also, I want to introduce this color in another area of the work too. I'm gonna turn my paper just a little so a lot of times when I'm using a color, I don't want to use it in just one place, but maybe add it in another part of the painting or journal piece. That just kind of brings unity to the piece, to the composition, and brings uh, consistency. So there we have it. I love Tombow markers because <clears throat> the way they're made really allows a uh, lot of control. It is like a paintbrush on the tip. I'm going back and doing this area as well. This practice is so good when we're locked down at home. Um, really, really relaxes the mind. Okay, so I've got some of that going on. And a lot of times when, so my markers are in a stand, a little holder. And so um, I'm not gonna show you because if I start moving things around, I'm liable to knock over the video. But, um, a lot of times, though, if I want to get back to that color, I'm gonna build up a pile over here of color because uh, that way I'll know which one I used. So I usually end up a piece, I'll have an entire mass of markers around my piece, but that's why. So I, while I'm over here, I'm pulling out some more colors that are catching my eye today. Super fun. Um, and I've talked about brown many times on uh, on the painting videos. So um, I want to mention brown again here. That brown, just think earth. Brown is such a grounding color and I include it uh, brown, black, and white in just every piece I do um, has some, some form of brown. So I'm going to use this brown here is going to be our earth color. It just it's a, a neutral to me. And I love all kinds of brown. Siennas and umbers and different, different kinds of brown. I make a lot of my own browns, which is, is so funny because sometimes you make brown on accident, like orange and purple get mixed together and you've got brown. But, but when you Try, try to make this perfect brown that you want. It's hard. But when you accidentally make brown, they're, they're amazing. And you can never make them when you're trying to. It's hilarious. Okay. So you notice I'm just dabbling around each of these shapes. Not getting all um, picky about it. Which is hard for me because I'm a bit of a control freak that way.
When I was in school as a kid, I, I, I have this, this very vivid memory in the sixth grade. My teacher, um, she would get so frustrated with me because I would start an assignment and I would write my name and date in class in the upper right hand corner of a piece of paper. And if it was not perfect, it crumpled up and I started a new piece. And I did that until I got it exactly right and could move forward. I would erase, but I couldn't stand the erase marks. And so I, um, I would start a new piece every time. And oh my gosh, what a terrible habit and wasteful, I know. But it was, you know, I was young at the time and didn't realize. But I have a little of that control freak nature in me. <laughs> okay, so again, just allowing these little areas to call my name and working through the, the brown in some of these places. I'm loving the brown. So, <clears throat> I think I'll hold off on that yet. Okay, so I got some brown going down, going down with the brown. And now I'm going to pull out some purples and this fabulousness here. Let's see, yeah, I'm already ready. Okay, so I'm gonna start up here. And, and these pattern areas, um, sometimes I will specifically break them up and not do every other line. Sometimes I'll do one, skip two, do one, skip one, skip one, skip two, um, deliberate randomness. But, so don't, don't feel like yours have to be in perfect order. I'm just going with the way this is, the way this is happening. And it's different when I'm talking through it too, because I'm having to remember to talk and pay attention to the video and that type of thing. Whereas it's a little bit different when I'm just going along on my merry way. Okay. I love this purple and I want to bring this in. So again, allowing the lines over here to show me some areas I can work in. And we may come back at the end of, you know, the color areas, I may come back and add dots and marks um, on top of these outlying areas too. We'll just see. We'll see what we're feeling when we get there. It's so fun when you remember that this is, you know, this is for fun. This is not for a grade. Okay. Now, I am ready to bring in some red. Uh, actually, I found this super amazing, cool orange yesterday when I was working on some pieces. I think this is it, 885. I believe that's it. We could be wrong, but I'm gonna try it right now because it was so pretty yesterday. And I'm going to start over here Yep, that's it. This is the most amazing color. Especially up against this brown.
So now as you finish up coloring most of your shapes, um, you can come back and fill in little spots if you see. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, like agonize over every line, but if you just want to touch up a little bit to get the overall effect that you want, you can take a minute and do that. And then, um, so I have a little background left here that's open and I could introduce color here if I want to. I see this section here is one background piece. This is one and this is one. So I'm gonna start over here and I wanna come in with a really, really light. Um, this is a 942 really light wash. And this is just a neutral, but you could do whatever you want. If you wanna float some color, do some uh, Caran d'Ache crayon, watercolor. So I'm just, and I'm not, I'm not um, going all up to the edges perfect. I really am just kind of brushing that color around just to give a little shady effect there. And I like that color a lot. I like how that's making the rest of the piece kind of pop. So I'm just gonna continue it over here. Now, I, I see these, these dark black ones here, these little humps, and they're really solid and hard edged. So I'm gonna come back in with my Posca now and just go over them really fun. So that added just a little, little looser element, and this has been bugging me. So I'm gonna take the Posca pen and just do a couple of marks over that as well. Um, and I still want to color in this bottom area, like this background area here. It's fine like it is or, or whatever, but I'm feeling something there. So, again, I'm going to go with the super light. And I think I'm going to try this super light blue and see what happens. And if you pick up a little color from your edge, like that purple, that's fine. Just keep working it around. I like the little, the light blue. It's really fun. What's really fun too, when you finish these journal pieces, you can turn your journal around in every direction and see what orientation you like the best. A lot of times I will turn a piece over and like it at uh, upside down, or at a 90 degree turn better than I liked it the way I worked it um, a lot of times. And I love it because whoever ends up with the piece, they can turn it around to the way that they like it too. There's just different elements and people see it differently in different places. So that's just an option for you to turn around though and look at your work, it's really fun. Okay, so I've got color in here and now I can come in again with um, the Posca pen. I'm gonna do the Posca pen. And I may even get a couple of different Posca pens here. A little pop of yellow would be fun in this piece. Yellow is always a neat thing to add. So I'm gonna add just some little yellow dots back over here. I'm literally just tapping the marker on top of the piece. Now, if you're using a lighter color of Posca marker, it will help to put it on, let it dry, let it get good and dry, and then come back and do on top of your marks again. This is a light color and it's going on a marker, a darker marker. Um, and Posca pen too, sometimes it just, this is super light and so it's nice to get a little more pop, you can come in and just go right over the dots again and it will make them stand out a little more. 
So that's what I'm doing. Okay. And I can even go over it a third time if I want, but I like that. Just shakes up the shape just a little bit. And then in here, I'm gonna put some little blue, I think, triangle. Hold on, we got a watery marker, hold on. Here it comes, come on. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put in some little blue marks here. Again, practice that mark making. You can do triangles or little seed shapes, ovals, circles, whatever you want. Or both, a combination of both, all three. Have fun with it. I like that blue. So I may even come over here. Just to add a little more of that blue. I like that. That's just fun. I like fun. Okay. That's super cool. All right, and then I'm playing with the idea, but I don't, okay. I'm gonna leave that like it is right now. I love that, that is just so fun. Okay, um, I'm going to take my pencil now And this is just the same plain pencil I was using earlier, and I'm just gonna add some marks in this section here. And I think I will crosshatch these for fun. Notice I don't worry if I go over the edge of the other lines. That is totally fine. Have fun with this. And the little yellow still isn't showing. I think it's because it's up against the brown. I'm gonna hold off on that for just a second. But I think I'll add some marks to this here. And yours can be straight, they can be uneven, even. You can twirl your pencil and get them really funky. Whatever you're feeling. some black dots to this spot here. Mm -hmm. 
truly, it's always a good idea to stand up, walk away, go get a cup of tea, whatever, walk away, come back and look at the work. And, you know, and there may be things that you want to add or change, um, just a, a fresh perspective, just get back for a few minutes and come back in. Or you'll be working on something and you're like, oh, this is horrible, I can't stand it, it's awful, yuck. And then you go away and you come back later or in the morning or whatever and you're like, oh my gosh, that's really good, that looks cute, I like it. Um, it changes your whole perspective, just get out of it. You get so close into it that you you forget to, to, to look. You know, look what I mean. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I'm liking this, but I'm thinking too that add some of these little marks here and add a couple over here. Okay, so I could keep going, but I'm really, I'm good with where this is at. Um, and I may come back later and add some more little spots here or there. But for right now, I'm good with where it is. So I want you to look at it and and kind of see how fun it was. And there's there's just, this is journal play. This is fun. And this is how we are going to start our color the world 100 challenge so i hope this helps you get going i can't wait to see your work don't forget to tag on instagram with color the world 100